Okay, welcome to this video. This is the follow-up to the, this other video. If you haven't watched this one first, go and watch it, otherwise you'll be completely lost in this video. In this video we'll be setting up some basic things to get up and running with ESP3D version 3 installed on your ESP cam. So in this video we're connecting our ESP cam to our printer. Uh, I had to connect mine to a Ender 3 V2, which had no easy serial connection. Maybe your printer's got an easy serial connection. This would be quite a drama for you. But if you go to the uh, ESP3D website, there is a page in the show notes which has all the hardware connections for different printers. And it's just got um, sort of screenshots of where they've managed to connect to the serial connections of the printer. It talks to the printer using UART, so your printer's probably got a mighty USB connection in the front of the printer. It's not a UART connection, that is a USB connection. And um, if I mentioned in this other video, uh, it's a rule made to try connect to a serial um, connection on a USB plug because it needs a host and this, all these other complicated things. So in this video, uh, we'll just assume you've connected and you've found a way to connect and you're up and running. On my printer when it's connected, it comes up on the UI screen giving the IP address so I know it's connected to my network and it's connected to the ESP cam. So if you've got that on your screen, it might be different on your printer, I'm not sure, but I know that's what's happening on my one, you're good to go. So here's the UI for ESP 3D, which we've discovered in the last video. And we can see it doesn't, it's not really telling us much. Um, to confirm that you've connected to your printer okay, just go into settings and Marlin, and it pulls these codes, I guess, from the machine, or communicates with the machine, and um, it produces this output. If that's not the, not connected, but if you've got the IP address in the machine, you're definitely up and running. Also on the screen, you'll see uh, there's some um, verbose output from the serial communications between SP3D and the machine. So let's just jump into the settings. So it's pretty self-explanatory here. You've got your network set up, uh, whether you want to be in client mode or access point mode. So when it boots up, it'll always be access point mode. I know it's pretty, sounds, sounds dumb, but it's, it's possible. Uh, you've got client mode as well, where it'll connect to your um, local network based on the client mode configuration. I force the IP address here, uh, just because I don't want it grabbing a different address every time it starts up. And access point details, if you do want to run it as an access point, it's all there as well. The Telnet protocol, I haven't tested it on this printer yet, on this version of firmware yet, but certainly on the ESP3D version 2, I could stream data straight from um, Octoprint to the um, printer just sending down a serial port and it would print as long as that's all it was doing it would print the job so I didn't have to have any hard wire connection between the printer or use the, the memory card right it would just print jobs straight out also in here we've got the time settings so you can set up your uh, NTP server if you want to get the times notifications uh, I haven't played around this either to be honest but I see you've got iFit in there so you could do push messaging for when printing jobs are finished. Might cover that in a later video. System software, uh, target firmware, obviously we're going to be, maybe not obviously, but for me anyway, it's going to be Marlin. Moving on to the interface screen, this is where things start getting a bit more um, ex exciting, I guess. We've got the, um, we can organize our panels, which is what is displayed in the dashboard, <clears throat> and change their order. This is on a desktop. It's Obviously a bit different on the mobile, I prefer it on the mobile screen, it just looks a bit more fluid, but it's exactly the same thing, but you know, straight up and down. And the first one I'm really interested in here is the polling, because when we go into the dashboard now, we've got the charts aren't working, we've got no information at all, came back from the printer, so we need to poll the printer for the information. So what we go into is the polling, and we add a command, and we'll just call it status. And the command we use is uh, M27 semicolon M27 C semicolon M31. In refresh time, you want it to be about 10 seconds. So this is all in milliseconds, so we'll just change, which is 10,000. 
and we'll just click on save so when we go to the dashboard now we can see now we have this uh, print status and from over here we can choose a job to print so in here um, depending on your settings you should choose flash SD card and extra SD card if you've got a touch screen or something like that you might have access to those areas as well but for this printer it's got SD card on the camera and in the printer itself so this is the flash storage on the device we can't print that obviously and um, SD card in the printer is empty at the moment but if I were to take photos they'd be stored all on SD card I could download them from there if I wanted to but the extra SD is the card which holds all the job and you can see it's this is a limitation of g-code it can only show the first few characters of the file name so it's a bit of a pain in the ass but I can choose a job here to print if I click on play the print will start printing it we can see here and the status over here will start updating as the job goes through and gives me a details on whether it's it's printing or not and once it starts I can actually cancel and pause the job over here as well but these graphs will start working so it's feeding us temperature back as well um, we could have those temperatures running we could add another polling command to ask for those temperatures but who cares when it's not printing right uh, <clears throat> but these details because this the, what's going on with the printer and the temperatures my printer wants to heat up the bed before it starts heating up the, the hot end at the moment uh, to configure the camera for streaming now uh, we go back into our settings again and interface and it's under extra contact content we choose add and we'll just call it camera choose the camera icon just because it's a camera output <coughs> to a panel we change the type to ESP32 cam and the fresh time I don't know what you want to set it to I'll just set it to a second because I'm just checking to see the prints okay I don't need any more quicker than a second right and then scroll down and click on the save and jump onto my dashboard and there it is it's, it's just looking at me at the moment I haven't got it connected to my printer for now but I have got a um, remix of a remix of a remix of a, of a mount which is like an arm <clears throat> which lets it look down on the, uh, the print bed for um, tracking it with the camera it's it's not the greatest right you need some quite good um, lighting and odds are it probably won't be focused when you get it so you just get the camera with a long nose pair of pliers and just twist it's sort of like on a screw thread you sort of just twist the lens until it's in focus and um, I mean, so it's, it's good for monitoring but if you want some really high quality um, time lapses don't use it use this video instead it'll be give you much better quality all right so this job's printing now we can see there's the updated status the job it's printing and how long it's been going for how long it expects to go for I can pause it stop it anything I can do from the control panel so I'll just stop it because I've already printed jet job already and it'll go through and it'll cancel so the only other thing I wanted to cover today is doing the time lapse and you don't do the time lapse in here you do the time lapse in your slicer software so I use Cure mainly for what I do so we'll just jump into that and configure up the slicer so to set up the time lapse just go into your uh, slicing software I'm using Cura and just in ex extensions for Cura modify G code and add a time lapse and then in here this is the code we're going to put in to trigger the camera to work so it'll just be what you see there M118 space PO ESP101 and that so when it goes through to um, here to trigger it I've just got it for a Z change it'll send this code down and the ESP32 camera will detect it take a photo store it on the SD card within that's sitting in the camera itself it's got the option to park the print head there <clears throat> 
I mean, unless your printer's really dialed in, I have problems with stringing. So whenever I have that ticked on, it'll um, park the print head and it'll string and come back again. So I just leave that off and then, so the head's sort of in the way initially to start with when you're taking photos, but as it goes up, it's, it's not such a problem. But you don't get the stringing problem. So it's um, up to you whether you want to use that or not. In the previous video, what I didn't mention is uh, there was libraries to install. Those libraries are actually included in the ESP3D download in the libraries folder. So because it's an alpha, maybe it might be best to use the libraries that are bundled with the download because that's what that version has been developed for. So rather than download each one freshly, just download it. Just pull that out of the library that's in the download itself. In my original Wi-Fi 3D uh, video, I hooked up a ESP32 to my Ender, and I just used the 3.3 volts that was available in the front of the printer. It worked perfectly fine, flawlessly, no problem. Uh, for this one, it's got a 3.3 volt pin and a 5 volt pin, and I've spent hours just mucking around with this thing, trying to get it to work with 3.3 volts. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it wouldn't. It would come up on the screen saying configure AP and everything's fine. So um, short answer is run this off 5 volts, 3.3 volts is super unreliable and you'll lose your mind. Okay so it's just a quick rundown on getting up and running with ESP 3D version 3. You should be able to do a time lapse, get your printer progress and get your temperatures through to the UI as well as a live stream of the camera. If there's any other feature you'd like investigated, please let me know and I'll create a follow-up video. Aside from that, thanks for watching.